praise the Lord. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly we love the Lord with all of our heart and we want our voices and our praise to be a sweet, sweet sound in this year. Are there any announcements on this morning? I have two. Uh, just a quick reminder for anybody that's on the SPRC, we have a relatively brief meeting immediately following worship today. And then I wanted to thank everyone who participated in any way in our hoagie sale. It was very successful. We hope you enjoyed your hoagies. We'll do another one in March. Good morning. Good morning. So nice to have Ollie with us, feeling from Florida. Um, also, I wanted to, to give a thanks to Sue Curlett. Um, Sue has been doing the flowers that you see um, up here, and she's done a fall arrangement, and she also did the little flower arrangements along the sides in the, in the windowsills. It looks nice, it adds so much, and we really thank Sue for, for her talent and um, her generosity in doing this.
together. Heavenly Father, as we gather in your presence today, we lift our hearts in gratitude and praise. We thank you for the gift of this church service. Okay, let's try this again. Thank you. Let's pray together. Oh God, as we gather today, we know that we live our lives as best we can with your help. Let us trust in you for guidance. We are all dealing with difficulties. But help us to move into this day and every day with energy, goodwill, and optimism. We don't have answers on our own, so we we'll seek your higher wisdom in our lives. Help us to pray for your insight even more. Fill us with your wisdom that we may live lives of goodness and peace. Bless us during this service and throughout the coming week as we seek to know you better. Amen. Please turn to page 374 in the red hymnal. We will sing the standing on the promises.
The choir will now sing, Come, O Lord, and overflow us. Amen. We certainly thank God for the reading 
of his word on this morning. Um, we are going to just emphasize that 34th verse, which reads on this one, right? And looking up to heaven, he sighed deeply and said to the man, Ephatha, which in Aramaic means be opened and released. Today, we are going to be dealing with this word, this one word that seems to have such power this command given directly from God to this deaf and mute man. Would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that this is a day that you have made. And we rejoice and we're glad in it. Now, God, as we come to share your word, we ask that you would cause us to decrease. Allow your Holy Spirit to increase. God, we ask that you would send your word and that it would accomplish that for which it has been sent. We believe that in due season it will fall on good ground. We believe it is so and so it is. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In this passage, we see the people bringing a man who was deaf and could not speak to Jesus. The people begged Jesus to lay hands on him, recognizing their need for divine intervention. Jesus takes the man aside. He takes him away from the crowd and personally engages with him. He uses simple yet intimate actions, like touching the man's ears and tongue before speaking the word of transformation. I don't know if many of you are aware, but I am uh, among a lot of things. I guess you learn about more about me as we journey together, but one of the things about me is that I'm an author. Um, I published my first book maybe two years ago. Uh, it's a devotional, 21 day devotional, Divine Destiny Amplified a 21-day devotion to reclaiming your soul. In the, the course of the 21 days, one of the, the days, or two of the days, actually is about one touch. And it deals with the touch of God from the first day, the Old Testament perspective, and then the touch of God um, in the New Testament perspective. As I was reading or preparing for this week, that came to my memory um, about the fact or dealing with the fact that that one touch from God changes everything. And so no, we don't quite live um, back in these biblical times when we actually have a direct encounter with Jesus himself. Or even in the Old Testament when, when the angels, when God would send the angels to touch the people of God like some of those prophets, Elijah and Isaiah. Um, but God is still touching today. And I want you to know on this morning that his touch, just one touch, can change everything. This is the encounter. Or this is one of the many encounters or the many examples that support the reality that God is indeed omniscient. He's all-knowing. Um, he knows our needs before we even speak them. Just as he met this man where he was, God meets us in our brokenness, in our sadness, our deepest needs, desiring to heal and transform us. This account also serves as a reminder of the values of having a personal relationship with Christ. You see, transformation begins when we acknowledge our need and allow Jesus to meet us where we are. At Father. Specifically in the 34th verse, 
Jesus looked up to heaven. And it, the words describe him sighing deeply. And he said to the man, Ephatha. The word Ephatha comes from, the, from an Aramaic, an Aramaic verb, which means be opened. In the New Testament, the word is transliterated into Greek as Ephatha, preserving the original Aramaic pronunciation. This word is not only a command uh, for physical healing, but also carries a deeper spiritual significance. It symbolizes opening, opening oneself to God's transformative power. Opening ears to hear God's voice and our hearts to respond to his call. Ephatha is a powerful Aramaic word that reflects Jesus' authority to both heal physical and spiritual conditions. As it is used in Mark 7.34, it highlights the deep connection between physical healing and spiritual renewal. Let us dig deeper into the symbolism of the man's condition. While the man's condition was physical, there are struggling, or physical, there are struggling with, he was struggling with uh, uh, a spiritual deafness. There are others, I'm sorry. The man's condition was physical. Jesus spoke to his physical condition. But there are many of us who are struggling with spiritual deafness or spiritual muteness or perhaps both. Being spiritually deaf means being unable or unwilling to hear God's voice, his truth or his guidance. While being spiritually mute can represent the inability or reluctance to proclaim God's truth, to testify to his goodness or praise him, it can also signify a life that lacks witness or testimony. Failing to speak of God's power. I told you I grew up in a Baptist church and, and when we would have evening services on Sundays, we would start with what's called devotion. And they would sing songs, uh, different songs throughout devotion. But every now and then someone would stand up and give a testimony. And so we would call that testimony services. Um, in that instance, you know, growing up, I didn't quite um, understand it until I actually lived a little and recognized that God has done or he continues to do some great things. And it would be remiss of me to get silent when God has done something great in my life. In fact, when we testify, when we share of the goodness of Jesus, when we share how we've overcome, when we share how he's healed us, how he's delivered us, how he's kept us, how he's made ways, it actually serves as an encouragement to someone else. And it might even be the very thing that causes someone to want to yield their lives to God. Jesus commands, or his command comes from his deep compassion and divine authority, showing his power to restore and renew. A father is not just a physical command, but a spiritual one. Jesus is calling each of us to be open to his transformative work in our lives. This includes opening our hearts to his grace, our minds to his truth, and our lives to his purpose. After Jesus speaks the word of Father, the man's ears are opened, and his speech is restored. Despite Jesus' request for silence, he tells them, oh, keep this to yourself, in other words. Don't go tell anyone. Um, the people did the exact opposite. They went running and telling and testifying. The people could not contain their amazement. They declared, among the others that were not there to witness, that Jesus had done everything well. How many of us can testify on this morning that God does all things? 
well. The word even decrees that, that he takes the good things and the bad things. He takes everything and he works it together for our good. And if I were to be transparent, I could tell you that I've had some rough times and I've had some lonely days and I've had some sleepless nights, but I can stand here today and testify that God has worked it all together for my good. This is what I want to leave on record for you this morning. The first thing is that transformation requires vulnerability and receptivity to the work of the Holy Spirit. Just as the man's ears and tongue were opened and released, so too must we be open to hearing God's voice and released to speak his truth. The second thing I want to leave on record for you is that transformation becomes a testimony to the power of Jesus. The crowd witnessed a miracle and they spread the word about Jesus' power and compassion. Ultimately, transformation in Christ leads to testimony. When Jesus works in our lives, it, is not only, it not only changes us, but it also becomes a witness to others about his power and his love. True transformation cannot be hidden. Just as the man's healing was visible and undeniable, so too is the impact of God's work in our lives. We are called to share our stories of transformation with others, giving glory to God and encouraging them to speak his healing and to seek his healing power. As we are carrying on this week, with our week's responsibilities and going about our days. I want us to ask ourselves in those still moments. I don't know how you do it. I know I tend to wake up four day in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, so I can be in the stillness of the atmosphere, begin to hear from God, speak to God, hear from God. But wherever you get your, your personal uh, uh, devotional time, your personal space, to commune with God. I want you to ask yourself, I want us to be, uh, and, and I want us to inquire of ourselves, where in our lives are we in need of transformation? I told you it requires some vulnerability. I know I like to, I, I got a compliment this morning that I always look good, I, I like that. <laughs> um, but the truth of the matter is, I may like to look good, but I'm not always good. And if I walk around in the, in the perception that I'm all good, I miss the opportunity for God to make all things good with me. And so when we are in this journey, we need God to make us good. And in order to do that, we have to be vulnerable. We have to share the, the ugly things about us, the not so nice things about us, the things people would cringe if they knew. We all have some of those. So we will, I want you to be vulnerable. I challenge us to be vulnerable on this week, to, to ask ourselves where in our lives do we need this transformation? Do we need transformation in our spiritual life? Perhaps someone needs deeper faith or trust or help engaging with God's word and responding to his call. Someone else might need transformation in their attitudes and mindsets. Perhaps someone needs to let go of pride. Is there pride or self-centeredness that keeps you from fully embracing humility and serving others? Transformation can come by letting go of ego and embracing humility and embracing a mindset of humility and love. And then there might be someone who, who needs help cultivating gratitude and joy. Are you often negative, struggling with discontentment? I think we call those Debbie Downers. <laughs> you know, some people just walk around with a dark cloud. Um, I have a student and it's the first time ever in 20 years 
But every morning we do check-ins. How are you today? Scale of one to five. Five being great, one, you know, not so great. And every morning he says one. If I ask him what is it that he likes to do, he says smell grass. If I, if I say, you know, is there anything you're looking forward to? It shocked me. He said he's not looking forward to anything. He doesn't care for anything to be good. He doesn't hope for anything. He just, I was just, I was, I was shocked. And I, I looked and I said, wow. I'm trying to figure out, is this a call for attention or is this a call for some real intervention? And I, I took both methods and, and if you know anything, although there's no prayers in school, if you are praying somebody, you know how to pray. And I just began to pray because he's so young to be so oppressed with the spirit of depression. And so I, I looked around and I've been praying and I've been talking like, you know, when should we intervene, invite the family in to come? And, and, and help us see, you know, if we can get him some services. And lo and behold, last week, we were sitting around and I heard him laughing. Laughing so much so that I looked and I had already asked him that morning how he was feeling, he said a one. Um, and so I looked at him and I said, hey, young man. <laughs> I said, uh, how are you feeling now? Is that still a one? And he quickly looked at me, a one. He's so monotone. I said, wait a minute, that doesn't quite sound like a one. I said, you sure it's a one? I said, do you know what anything outside of a one feels like? Then he thought about it. He said, maybe a three. And you know what I said? Thank you, Jesus. We're up from one to three. And as he continues to become more comfortable, I'm believing God that he'll move up to a five. We'll see if we can get him there. But there might be someone who needs help cultivating that gratitude and that joy. You struggle in those dark places. And then there still might be someone who needs transformation in the area of their relationships with others. Are there some broken relationships in your life where healing and forgiveness is needed? Transformation often comes when we seek reconciliation, forgive others, or ask for forgiveness ourselves. If there's one thing you should know about me is that I never hold a grudge. Not that I would need to have one here. <laughs> but I never hold a grudge. It's the strangest thing is that I, I believe that it's just become a part of my person that I like to, to say what it is, we hash it out, and I carry on, I never forget, I never remember that it happens, right? It's a good thing for me. I, I, I've learned that it works best, it keeps you moving forward. But as, I, as, as, as forgiving and gracious as I am, how quickly I forget, I never hold it against people. We can resume like, it never, like nothing ever happened. It's not so easy for others. And some people hold on to these things and, and it becomes hardened in your personality. And so sometimes uh, the easiest way to seek transformation, to be free, to be opened, is, and to be released is to offer forgiveness. And can I just put this in here? Sometimes we gotta forgive ourselves. Transformation often comes as we seek reconciliation Forgive others and ask for forgiveness ourselves, allowing God's love to restore brokenness. Are there destructive and unhealthy habits that need to be transformed, such as addictions, anger, or impatience? Transformation can come by allowing God to help break these, break these, because transformation comes through developing healthy spiritual habits that draw us closer to God. Patterns, and, re and they, they break up these patterns, they replace them with self-control, and we can replace them with the peace of God and live in a new life. So I challenge each of us to pray for the willingness to be opened to whatever Jesus is asking of us. Whether it's healing, growth, or a new direction, in your spiritual journey, be opened. 
Reflect on the ways Jesus has transformed you and how you can share your testimony with others. Allow your transformation to become a testimony that glorifies God and encourages other, others. I want you to remember that transformation is an ongoing process of becoming more like Christ in every area of our lives. Whether in our spiritual practices, relationships, attitudes, our behaviors, God desires to bring transformation and renewal. By being open to his leading, we can experience deep, lasting change and grow into the people he has called us to be. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for you are great. We thank you for your power to heal and transform. Help us to be open to your work in our lives, to receive your grace, and to allow our lives to be a testimony of your goodness. May we continually respond to your call to be opened and live in the fullness of your love. It is so and so it is in Jesus' name. Amen. There are three calls that we want to extend invitation. It's just one big call, opening the doors of the church is what we used to call it. But the first one is a call to salvation. Um, someone may be seeking salvation or guidance on, on, on the process of receiving salvation. We invite you. Um, at this time, someone else might be seeking a church home. And you want to know how to connect to the Broad Street uh, church family. We certainly extend that invitation at this time. And then there's someone who may be in need of prayer. Maybe your request on today is that the Lord will continue to transform me or that I will be open to transformation. We invite you at this time. We're going to turn in our hymns to 462. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus.
Dear Lord, we come to you waiting, trusting, believing, knowing you will provide, that you will heal us, that we can talk boldly, safe in your arms. Help us when we struggle, when we are anxious, even in times of plenty. Guide us back to you when we stray from the path. We pray for our country, for those who love her, and for all who protect her all over the world. Hear our prayer for continued freedom, O Lord. We pray for all those who are hurting, who need your healing touch. We pray for all who will be lifted up in prayer this morning, aloud or in silence, spoken in our hearts. You know what is needed, Lord, and you will provide. We bring our lives to you and we lay our joys, our concerns, our celebrations, and our worries at your cross. Open us to your transforming power. We trust in you, our Creator and our Savior. Amen. Now let's pray for those dear to our hearts. We pray for Shirley Bowman. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Now we will pray the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This is the part of our service where we give as a way to show our thanks for God's many blessings. Stewardship means more than just giving money. It is an act of faith, trust, and gratitude. It is our way of responding to God's grace and recognizing that everything we have is a gift from Him. I encourage you to think about how you can take part in this act of giving. Your contributions help support the mission of our church and share Christ's love with our community and beyond. Let us give with joyful hearts, trusting that God will see our offerings, use our offerings to bless others and grow his kingdom. We're now going to follow the ushers, be directed by the ushers. <laughs> Full of gratitude, 
We offer these gifts as a symbol of our commitment to live lives of worship, not just within these walls, but in every moment of our existence. May our actions, our words, and our very lives be a testament to your glory, shining forth your love and grace to all we encounter. Amen. Thank you for making us one family under your name.